Salutations, salutations, greetings. What's going on? However you said in your neck of the woods, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Le Art of Reading Price Action. Again, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of The Art of Reading Price Action. If you don't know who I am, my name is Timothy Lee Rogers Sr., a.k.a. Aranya Grande. That's big spot for those that don't hablo espanol. And this is The Art of Reading Price Action, a series where I'm going through and mentoring, if you will. We do have a mentorship. If you like to pay for the paid portion of the mentorship, there's a join button here somewhere on the screen. It's $24.99 a month where you get access to yours truly every Wednesday night, whenever we have homework, that is, to cover homework every second Sunday to have Q&A about anything you want to talk trading and you get access to the exclusive Discordia. <laughs> that's enough for the sales pitch, man. If you don't want to, you know, partake in that, that's fine. All the videos will be on Al Gore's internet for free anyway. Now, let's get into it. In this episode of Le Art of Reading Price Action, we will be talking about the order blocks. What exactly is an order block? I'm glad you asked that question. An order block is a PDA rate, something that was created by Michael J. Huddleston in order to trade the ICT concepts, you know, what I trade. We're getting it. This is the second PDA rate of the um, series. The first one we talked about, the swing highs and swing lows, your swing points. That's the first introduction to PDA rates. Now we're talking about order blocks. Now, there's two different categories of PDA rates. I put them in two different categories. One, imbalances, and two, reference points. Le order block is a reference point. So, without further delay, let's get into it. The order block. I like to refer to the reference points Especially on everything stems with all of the reference points, all of the blocks stems from the order block, order block theory, right? So I like to think of it, all PD arrays really, but mainly the order block as the breadcrumbs of price action. You know, in the storybooks, when kids would go out and they would want to find their way back home through the woods, they would drop breadcrumbs so they are nowhere to go back to. That's what the algorithm does. Oh, Ipta. Ipta drops breadcrumbs. Be like, hey, I left that order block back there for a reason. Let us go back to it, shall we? Now, what is an order block? Let's talk about a bullish order block. The lowest candle with a down close that has the most range between the opening close and is near a support level. I mean, a beefy candle. When it says the most range between the open and close, a beefy candle. You want it to be beefy. Two different ways you can find order blocks. One is when the price is moving with displacement. And one is when it's coming out of consolidation. But the one in consolidation, we're going to get into that later. That's a little bit more advanced. Right now, we're just going to focus on, let's find the order blocks first. Right? Validation. When the high of the lowest down close candle is traded through by a later form candle, right? This is straight from ICT. Then I'm gonna give it to you the way Lil Timmy Rogers see it. I shouldn't say it, a man named Michael. This is Michael's side. This is one of the slides from the ICT concepts. Entry techniques for those who wants to trade. We're not trading right now. We just learn how to read price, but entry techniques. When price trades higher away from the bullish order block and then returns to the bullish order block candle, this is bullish. So when you create the order block, bullish order block and trade away from it up, and if it was bearish, you create the order block and trade down away from it, you get it, flip it on its head. Defining the risk, again, for those who want to trade it, we're not trading yet. Don't forget, mentees, we're not trading yet. We just learn how to read price. But for those who are trading, the low of the bullish order block is the location of a relatively safe stop loss placement just below 
of the order block's total range, that's called mean threshold. We'll get into that later. You'll learn that later, mentees. It's also considered to be a good location to raise the stop loss at the price runs away from the bullish order block to reduce risk when applicable. Meaning once you get into the position and it starts going in your favor, if you want to reduce your risk, then you can move it up to just below mean threshold, just below 50% of the total range of the order block. Now, this is how little Timmy Rogers see it in his mind. When price trades to a support or resistance level, that's A, come down to this support level. We've defined a bullish order block, so we're coming down to a support level. In this case, we're going to say that this is a old low that we're coming to because the support level can be any PDA rate, any higher time frame PDA rate that can be your support level or resistance in the case of a bearish order block. Trades to a support level and is met with heavy contrarian displacement. That's B. See, I, we got this heavy contrarian displacement here. Price is mm, mm, getting up. Nice, beefy, mm, getting up away from there. And then the high of the last down close candle, this candle right here, is violated right there. See that little line there from C? Right there. And if in the case of a um, bearish order block, you'll be violating the low, right? You'll come up to resistance, heavy contrarian displacement, and violate the low of the candle, and that'll create the bearish order block. Now, we tracking, we cooking with Crisco. Okay, now, this is a bullish order block. Remember, this is how it looks. Show it again without the letters in there. And mind you, these candles do not have wicks on them, but you would consider the wick. Depends on who you ask. Some people only trade the bodies because they say wicks do the damage, bodies tell the stories. Me, myself, it just depends. If it's a super long wick, sometimes I exclude it. If it's a little itty bitty wick, sometimes I include it. But I like, I like to focus on the body because again, bodies tell the story, wicks do the damage. Right, so come down to a level of support, heavy contrarian displacement, right? When that high is violated on the last down close candle of this price leg, there's your order block right there. And again, with the annotation. And when it trades back to it, that would be your entry, trading away back to it. Now, this is an example of a bearish order block. And an example of using a fair value gap as le resistance. That's French, by the way. Fair value gap is acting as resistance level. Here's your fair value gap here. See the little black line there? The little black line there? That's the high of the SIBI. That's the low of the SIBI. Price trades back up into, and here's your drinking word, and anticipatory reactionary point. True gang gang know what that means, right? You're coming to an area where you anticipate price to do something, an area of resistance, if you will. It is met with heavy sales side displacement, heavy, beefy, moving, getting out of there, heavy displacement. Now, displacement is usually accompanied with another imbalance, as you see right here. The candle moved quickly away. It moved so fast that the next candle did not have time to trade back up into the first candle, leaving another imbalance. So displacement will typically be accompanied with an imbalance. Heavy displacement, heavy sell side displacement. The low of the up close candle is violated, right? See there? Up close candles violated. Violated that low. Violated that low. Now, if it's just one candle, you'll be looking at 
just that one candle. Since it's multiple candles, you're looking at multiple multiple consecutive up close or consecutive down close. Hopefully I didn't confuse you on that. And then again, for those who's trading, but we're not trading, this will be your entry when price returns back to it. That's bearish. So came to an area of resistance, was met with heavy contrarian displacement, trade back into it, that's a bearish move. And then you get short here, and it poof, drop, poof, drop, poof, drop, it like it's hot. Homework. Yes, this was a quick one. Doesn't take long to explain it. Now, this is where the magic happens. When you go back through your charts and find the examples and etch it into your mind. Don't use an etch a sketch. Etch it with a pen, hammer and chisel even. You want it to stick. Now, what I want you to do, over this week, get it done by Wednesday, mentees. Wednesday night, 7 p.m., we're going over homework. Pull up with your hard-hitting questions. Go back through price and mark bullish order blocks on the 60-minute chart. All right, do them one at a time. Once you mark that order block on the 60 minute time frame, drop down to the five minute and take notes on the five minute charts of how price reacted to the high, the open, the close, and the low of the bullish order block when it traded back to it. Meaning, when price traded back to this is a bearish order block. When price traded back to the bearish order block, you would say, how did price react to the low, the open, the high, and the close? Right? Did it consolidate at the low? Did it reject off the open? Did it make it, did it not make it to the close? Did it not make it to the high? What time of day did it react? with the order block what time of day was the order block created you know you know how it goes you know how it goes we're using the es june contract and we're going one month back to present so go back a month mark out an order block on the 60 minute chart drop down to the five minute chart annotate how price reacted to it when it came back i'm gonna show you a little tip on how not to get lost when you're going through price. Then go back through and do the same thing for bearish order blocks one month back. Now, let's jump over to the chart so I can give you a quick tip on how not to get lost when you're dropping down in price and then we're gonna call this one. Okay, so you're gonna go, you're going a month back. I'm not gonna scroll a month back right now, but you're going a month back up into present, okay? Now, you want to mark out, we're going to go here and we're going to mark out a bullish order block. I'm just going to come here, mark out this order block right here. Stretch it out in time. Boop, boop. Every time price, just keep stretching it to whenever price touched it. Boop. Okay, that's the last time price touched it right there. Okay, now, so that you don't get lost in the sauce. Take a vertical line. The first candle that touched it after trading away, after it traded away from it, the first candle that touched it, drop a line. Drop a vertical line on that candle. If it came back and touched it again, drop a line on that candle. If it came back and touched it again, drop a line on the first candle that touched it. If it came back again, drop a line on the first candle that touched it. Now you want to get the time it was created off the 60 minute. Okay, so this is the order block, the 7 a.m., 8 a.m., and 9 a.m. candles. Create this order block because it's three candles in, in um, succession. So 7 a.m., 9 a.m., 8 a.m., and 9 a.m. on March the 11th, that's the order block. When you drop down to the five minute, this is when you can go through now and you understand, okay, this is when price 
first traded back to it. It started trading back to it on this hourly candle right here. It's the 8 a.m. candle on um, the 12th, which will be the next day. This is the candle that started trading back down to it. It traded into it on the 8.30, five-minute candle. The biggest that wick is, that looks like a news candle. All right? Feel free to go through forexfactory.com and look at March the 12th and see if there was red folder news at 8.30 a.m. And see if I'm correct. Then you would annotate what happened with the with the high, the open, and you can mark out the you can mark out the high open um low and close on there just so that you can get a good feel for what price is doing. Right? If it's multiple candles, then you want to annotate which candle was it reacting to? Was it reacting to the highest candle? of the area was it reacting to the middle candle was it reacting to the last down close candle was it reacting to mean threshold how do you find mean threshold stretch a fibonacci tool from the highest high to the lowest low of the order block and 50 percent is your mean threshold and you know how to save it make your notes so that you can understand it in a way that makes sense to you. Don't do what you think I want you to do. Make your notes make sense to you. And don't overthink it. Just go back through. Mark out your order blocks. That's a, bear, that's a bullish order block. This here is a bearish order block. Right there. Price came up. To an anticipatory reactionary point, buy side liquidity was met with heavy contrarian um, displacement. There's your imbalance. Violated the low. There's your order block right there. There's your bullish, I mean your bearish order block right there. Again, price came down to an anticipatory reactionary point. In this case, it was another order block. You had an order block and a fair value gap. Mm, confluence was met with heavy contrarian displacement. There's your um, imbalance right there, signifying a displacement. A fun fact, another thing you're gonna learn about later, that's a propulsion block. That's another type of order block. We'll learn that later. And with that, I yield my time. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to another episode of Le Art of Reading Price. Thanks, <laughs> yo. Again, if you'd like to join the paid portion of the mentorship for $24.99 a month, there's a join button here somewhere. It's channel membership. Um, if you don't, that's fine. Just like, comment, share, subscribe. Share this with somebody. Share this free information with somebody who you think will benefit from this. If you'd like to try your hand at trading with a prop firm, I recommend Apex because that's who I trade with. I have a link. In the description down there. They're right now, they're running 80% off all their evaluations with only one day to pass the evaluation. So if you're ready, if you're a consistently profit, profitable trader and you want to trade with a prop firm, try Apex and use my affiliate link. I'll appreciate it. Until the next time, I decide to get on Al Gore's internet and drop some knowledge, if you will, about this thing they call price action. It's your boy, Ranya Grande. Y'all be safe if I hear these trade streets, man. Gone. Yeah.